Lucien Blaga, The Great Anonymous, Transcendental Censorship, and Ontological Mutants, by Daria Dugina. Now let us move straight on to eschatological optimism. Here is where everything most interesting begins. For me, for a long time, the perfect example of eschatological pessimism was Emil Tioran. I had never encountered a more depressing and tragic thinker. Every time I had an attack of melancholy, I turned to him. Tioran became for me the equivalent of a gloomy Sunday or Diamanda Gala's music. His work is like an outcry of despair, a stylistically impeccable expression of the painful perception of reality. I would likely have considered Kioran to be a totally unique, lone genius had I never become acquainted with the works of Lucien Blaga and subsequently placed Emil Sioran within the context of deeply tragic 20th century Romanian philosophical thought. We'll begin our introduction to Emil Sioran by way of this other key figure in Romanian philosophy, Lucien Blaga, 1895-1961. Blaga was a philosopher and theoretician of culture. His most famous work is the Trilogy of Culture. I read it in French. I am not sure if there is a Russian translation. I recently began studying it, and I immediately realized that here was a great and severely overlooked figure. Blaga authored an incredible ontological theory which holds that the world was created by the great anonymous, Le Grand Anonyme. He is a Gnostic, but with a very strange twist. This is not straightforward Gnosticism. There is something very Russian about it, very fractured, very Dionysian, very mixed, and mad. Blaga says that man is thrown into the world created by the great anonymous by way of subtraction, not addition. Who is the great anonymous? According to Blaga, at first there exists the absolute. The absolute is powerful, great, and endowed with all supreme characteristics. But, being absolute, it cannot create an equally absolute world. If the highest God, this great anonymous, directly created a world as absolute as himself, then this world would be identical to him. This is to say that he would have created himself just as perfect, powerful, and fully fledged as himself. Then, instead of one absolute, there would be two. This cannot possibly be, because if there are two absolutes, then the first absolute ceases to be absolute and loses its superiority, power, and perfection. Then Blaga says that the great anonymous engages in creation in a limited way, employing transcendental censorship. This means that he deliberately creates a world that is not good enough. He deliberately depreciates the quality of this world so that it would never coincide with and be identical to him as the one and only absolute. Therefore, our world and the humans thrown into it were produced by this great anonymous in a somewhat incomplete fashion. This means that the universe is a kind of error, a glitch, the product of intentional censorship and the withholding of certain ontological components. And just as the created world is imperfect and incomplete, so are we incomplete and imperfect? This is a dangerous situation, because we are deprived of genuine knowledge, as the great anonymous hides himself from us. He makes himself unknowable. He remains hidden and concealed from us. While this resembles apophatic theology, I wouldn't rush to make such a claim, as there are too many Gnostic influences present here, as well as a Gnostic style of thinking. The person who begins their great awakening, i.e. the philosopher, strives for knowledge, for the highest and ultimate truth. They climb the ladder of contemplation until they reach a certain horizon. Blaga calls this the horizon of mystery. In geometrical terms, this could be represented as a trapezoid, that is, a triangle with a truncated top. A person climbs up the hierarchical steps, thinking that they lead directly to the one, to where all the rays converge. But if this were the case, then the world itself would be absolute, whereas it is actually manifested by the power of transcendental censorship. This means that the vertex of the triangle is cut off, censored. Where the last step, the highest segment of the triangle should be, there is nothing. There is a plateau, a plane. Man cannot know what the great anonymous is. Moving along the steps of positive knowledge, he can reach only the horizon of mystery. The human attempt to reach, to see, to know the great anonymous ends here. 
The condemned state of man in such a world as Blaga describes, which is our world, and is only one among others, consists in the fact that we are always limited by this horizon of mystery. It is impassable. At the same time, however, there is a difference between ordinary people who are content with their place in being and philosophers who ascend to the horizon of mystery. When a person turns their gaze from the lower, from the given, from illusion, to the higher, an important change takes place within them, an ontological mutation, in Blaga's words. The structure of this person's consciousness changes. The philosopher becomes an ontological mutant. Blaga thought that culture is precisely the pact which man makes with the great anonymous upon reaching the horizon of mystery. When the pact is concluded, the great anonymous gives some portion of knowledge to the ontological mutant, i.e., to the awakened human. But not directly, rather, this knowledge is granted in an apophatic way, through absence. Culture is the link between the great anonymous, between ultimate, supreme, absolute truths, and the human being. The mystery of culture is the central topic explored in detail in Blaga's Trilogy of Culture, translated by Jaff Arnold, from the Book of Eschatological Optimism.